Praise be to Allah, the cherisher and sustainer of the worlds. I'm Dr. Ramsha Mushta Khan, and today I have the opportunity to present on the topic Governance and Stewardship under the kind supervision of Professor Dr. Saira Afzal. Quote of the day, Stewardship is leaving a system better than you found it. The content outline of today, today's presentation includes introduction and scope of governance and stewardship, core functions, health system alignments, and key challenges in governance and stewardship, and recent advances and multiple choice questions at the end. At the end of this presentation, the participants will be able to define governance and stewardship in the context of public health, describe the governance roles of federal, state, and local public health agencies, explain the core functions of public health governance, discuss the importance of aligning governance across public health and healthcare systems, identify key challenges in public health governance and potential solutions, as well as recognize the global recent advances in this context. Governance refers to the oversight for public health systems at the local, state, and national levels. It involves establishing policies, plans, management structures, and decision-making processes to carry out public health core functions and essential services. The concept of governance has been evolving from one centered on institutional attributes towards one that addresses changes to the institutional mechanisms that regulate actors and critical health sector resources. This approach allows us to interpret those health system transformations that in order to improve access to health and to health coverage require related changes to health sector institutions. The type of governance required to achieve comprehensive health service networks with a people and community centered model of care requires changes to how different relationships or processes are regulated. For example, value and understanding of the actors involved in the health services network. Regulations of the interaction among actors involved in the organization, management, and care provided by the health services. Regulation of the relationship between services and the population. Intersectoral re re regulations for the services and other social sectors. The values, right to health, equity, and solidarity of the actors involved in producing health services constitute a foundation for social regulation that helps legitimize the transformation of health service delivery. Therefore, they are cross-cutting for all actors involved. International scope of governance. Good governance enables good stewardship. Effective governance strategies allow for clear delineation of roles and responsibilities across different public health entities. For instance, at the national level, key agencies like CDC and FDA implement governance through federal regulations, guidelines, and nationwide health initiatives. State health departments exercise governance through state laws, public health programs, and coordination across localities, whereas local health departments enact governance through assessing community needs, developing public health interventions, and directly providing services to their jurisdictions. In Pakistan, governance for public health involves oversight and management across federal, provincial, and local health authorities. At the federal level, the Ministry of Health Service, National Health Services, Regulations, and Coordination is the key agency responsible for national governance. It provides high-level high oversight and policy direction for public health programming across Pakistan's provinces and territories. Provincial health ministers and ministries and departments handle, handle governance and stewardship within ju their jurisdictions. For example, the Punjab Provincial uh, Health Department oversees public health services, regulations, and initiatives for the province of Punjab. District health authorities operate at the local level and govern essential public health activities in their communities like disease surveillance, immunizations, and maternal and child health services. Now the stewardship. Stewardship in public health reflects the obligation to ethically manage resources for the well-being of the population. It ensures efficient use of limited funds, fair distribution of public health services, and accountability across public health agencies. International scope of stewardship, competent stewardship at every level ensures that public health governance strategies translate into equitable and high quality services for all communities. Paying attention to governance and stewardship facilitates an optimally functioning public health system that improves population health outcomes. 
Scope of stewardship in Pakistan, good governance enables optimal stewardship of Pakistan's limited health budget and human resources. Key challenges include fragmented governance across multiple authorities, weak regulatory capacity, and insufficient public health infrastructure in rural areas. Strengthening governance uh, to improve stewardship remains an important priority. This involves coordinated governance across levels of the health system, building human resource capacity, and ensuring equitable access to public health services. Now let's examine the role of different governmental tiers in public health governance and stewardship in Pakistan, focusing on how federal, provincial, and local uh, govern governments interact. So first of all, we have the federal agencies, the Ministry of National Health Services, Regulations and Coordination, uh, the NH. SRC is the main federal agency overseeing national public health policies and programs. The ministry develops national health policies like the COVID-19 response plan for vaccine distribution. It also issues guidelines like for those essential medicine uh, pricing through the Drug Regulatory Authority of Pakistan. CDC's immunization gui guidelines, FDA's food safety regulations, and OSHA's worker health and safety policies, etc. The ministry enforces laws like the Organ uh, Transplantation of Human Organs and Tissues Act to regulate organ transplantation practices. The provincial health departments like Punjab, Sindh, Balochistan, and KPK health ministries govern health systems provincially. Provinces develop health policies based on situational analysis, expert input, and stakeholder engagement. Policy implementation. Provinces can adapt national policies based on local context. For example, since health policy to reduce malnutrition coordination, provinces work with the federal agencies to implement national programs like polio immunization drives. Examples include interprovincial education programs, national conferences of ministries and bodies. Now, the local bodies, uh, local health departments oversee frontline de service delivery through rural clinics, community health workers, and immunization campaigns. They undertake community-based preventive care and health promotion suited for local needs. The district health authorities provide fr frontline governance and services. Community health, they run health promotion activities like dengue awareness campaigns tailored to local communities. Health infrastructure, local bodies maintain rural clinics and hospitals to expand access to care. Core functions. The first core function is assessment. This function involves monitoring population health status, risks, and outcomes through various tools and data, data sources. The example include field epidemiology and laboratory training program in Pakistan. This program trains the workforce to monitor health uh, risks and outcomes, significantly strengthening Pakistan's epidemiological capacities. The key assessment capabilities include disease registries, which provide data on incidence and prevalence for diseases like cancer and diabetes. However, registries have limited coverage, focusing only on certain urban centers. Health surveys, Pakistan Demographic Health Survey, done periodically, provides maternal and child health data. Pakistan Risk, risk Factor uh, Surveillance Survey assesses NCD risk factors. However, however gaps remain in conducting regular na nationwide surveys. Vital Statistics, Pakistan Bureau of Statistics compiled birth and death uh, data, but inadequate civil registration limits data accuracy and scope. Health Management Information System, HMIS, generates data on service delivery and patient outcomes from public facilities. However, issues like data quality and underreporting remain. Challenges and key takeaways, Pakistan's health data systems are fragmented with issues ranging from coverage, quality, and analysis. Strengthening integrated data collection, surveillance, and health, uh, health research capacities is vital for robust assessment. Initiation of the National Health Information System in 2018 is a step in the right direction. The next core function is the policy development. This function involves creating plans, policies, and programs to address population health needs in Pakistan. The example include the Ministry of National Health Services Regulations and Coordination, which develops key national policies like the Maternal, Neonatal, and Child Health Program. The key national policies include Pakistan's National Health Vision 2016 to 2025 provides overarching strategic direction and roadmap for universal health coverage. National Action Plan for Health Security uh, includes improved preparedness against diseases and emergencies. 
The stakeholders are the uh, World Health Organization, which provides technical guidance for developing evidence-based policies aligned with the global health priorities, civil society organizations, which advocate for issues affecting marginalized groups. Private healthcare associations give input on feasible policies for their sector, and experts from medical universities and public health institutes inform policy formulation. The key challenges include inadequate funding constraints, implementation of ambitious policies. For instance, pri primary care reforms under the People's Health Program have been slowed down due to limited budgets. Weak engagement with lower, lower level stakeholders results in uneven adoption of policies across provinces. And frequent political transitions disrupt long-term policy continuity and stewardship. Key takeaway includes that multi-sectoral collaboration and sustained political commitment are essential for strengthening policy development and translating policies into actionable programs that improve population health. The next core function is assurance. This function involves ensuring accessible, equitable, and quality health services for the population. The uh, provincial, law, uh, provincial health departments are mainly responsible for assuring the quality of health services, like Punjab's initiative to expand drug testing laboratories. Expanding access, Prime Minister's National Health Program expanded health coverage to underserved populations. Public-private partnerships like Sihat Sahura Program provide insurance to poor families. Investments to upgrade basic health units and rural health centers improve access in rural areas. Ensuring quality, Healthcare Commission regulates both public and private health facilities to improve quality. Various bodies like uh, Pakistan Medical and Dental, Dental Council and Pakistan Nursing Council enforce standards for healthcare professionals through licensing and educational requirements. Accreditation systems for hospitals and labs are being implemented to improve quality. Key challenges and takeaways. Gaps persist with limited oversight and regulation enforcement capacity, resulting in uneven quality uh, across the health system. For instance, continued issues with unsafe injections despite regulations. Overall, Pakistan is taking steps to improve assurance, but more efforts are needed to build robust and transparent accountability mechanisms for equitable and quality service provision. Now, the health system alignment. Uh, the first Part of health system alignment includes integrated services. The Lady Health, health Worker Program provides essential primary health care services like immunization, family planning, basic maternal and child health at the community level. The Lady Health Workers act as an important link between communities and the formal health system. Addition, additional models include Immunization Plus, which is integrating immunization programs with nutrition advice and primary care services. Antenatal care integration, prenatal checkups integrate early registration, TT vaccination, risk screening, iron supplementation, and counseling on nutrition and newborn care. Integrated reproductive maternal newborn and child health uh, care, IRMNCH program provides continuity of care for women and children with integrated service delivery across the reproductive, maternal, newborn, and the child health continuum. Next is the resource sharing. The health information system allows data sharing between public health agencies like National Institute of Health, healthcare providers, and other stakeholders, and it improves coordination for service delivery, governance, and policy making. Additional information includes uh, architecture and interoperability. Different health information systems are being integrated under the digital health information system architecture. This allows inter interoperability and data exchange between systems like uh, DHIS, LMIS, HIV, and AIDS, etc. Information, health information exchange protocols enable real-time data sharing. And the challenges are data security, accuracy, and standardization issues. Challenges include uh, challenges to governance and stewardship in Pakistan are the varying policies, interprovincial discrepancies, different provinces may prioritize different health issues. The solution can be strengthening the interprovincial coordination to harmonize health policies. And the health impacts uh, can Im explain how different policy differences affect health equity and na national health indicators. Uh, next is the political factors. Uh, the resource allocation, how political agendas may influence resource allocation and governance. Uh, for example, midterm transitions disrupting program leadership, and the solution can be encouraging bipartisan collaboration and uh, policy continuity. 
Last is the public mistrust. Uh, for example, the challenges in uh, polio and COVID-19 campaigns. Uh, why public health uh, mistrust uh, em uh, emerge and how Im it impacts the health system. The solution can be increasing community engagement and transparency through public awareness programs and myths busting by discussing the role of social media and educational campaigns in dispelling myths and false information. Now the recent updates. An analysis of the National Health Vision in Pakistan 2016 to 2025 the COVID-19 pandemic revealed the inadequacy of the health infrastructure in Pakistan. After the 18th Amendment, provinces were given the right to devise health policies. The public, health, public sector is inadequately staffed and has below average job satisfaction and work, envi work environment. The purpose of the National Health Vision Pakistan is to harmonize provincial and federal efforts as well as interprovincial sectors to achieve desired health outcomes. It has the following objectives. Number one is to improve health while ensuring provincial autonomy, to build, to build coherence between federal and provincial efforts, to facilitate the synchronization across international reporting, to ensure coordination and surveillance information collection and regulation, and to, create, and to create functional basis for charting and implementing the sustainable development goals with other sectors. After 2011, there was a lack of consensus on the national health, uh, national vision of health in Pakistan because after the 18th Amendment, constitutional responsibilities were given to the provinces, and the concurrent list of federal powers was replaced by a list of provincial powers and a relatively small list of powers under the provincial uh, federal government. Uh, after the uh, formation of the National Health Vision Pakistan, Pakistan's national health vision has given priority to the universal health coverage and in, in that respect has aligned several policies to it as well. For example, in 2016, Sayed Suru program, a micro health insurance scheme was initiated by the government of Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, which aims to provide for financial aid and healthcare accessibility to the population living below the poverty line. Around 7.4 million people have successfully enrolled themselves in the program. In 2020, KPK initiated a six-phase program to ensure universal health coverage for all the residents of the province. In early 2021, the program became the first of its kind to ensure universal health coverage for 100% of its population. The impact of COVID-19 and the effectiveness of the vision. Uh, COVID-19 has impacted uh, healthcare systems around the world, rendering them vulnerable to the external stimuli. Uh, Pakistan has the highest prominence rate of diseases like malaria, tuberculosis, polio, and maternal issues. The healthcare system also lags behind uh, when it comes to quality assurance as compared to other South Asian states. Moreover, the geographical discrepancies that, uh, that exist among the different provinces and the rural and uh, uh, urban divide are also neglected. All these factors provide reasoning for why there is an urgent need to ensure universal health coverage. Now it's time for the multiple choice questions. Number one, a polio vaccination campaign in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa had to be abruptly ended due to attacks on health workers. This scenario highlights which key challenges challenge in governance. A, weak leadership, B, public mistrust, C, fragmented governance, D, poor health indicators, and E, resource constraints. So the answer is B, public mistress. The Prime Minister's Health Insurance Program aims to provide universal health coverage. This initiative indicates strong governance through which function? A, surveillance, B, accountability, C, policy development, D, regulation, and E, service delivery. So the answer is C, policy development. During the recent dengue outbreak, uh, there, were in, there were significant delays in response coordination between provincial and federal health agencies. The issue highlights A, poor health infrastructure, uh, B, lack of health system alignment, C, issues in regulation, D, limitations in accountability, and E, gaps in assessment. So the answer is uh, B, lack of health system alignment. The government allocated additional funding for HIV AIDS control amid a surge in infections. This exemplifies governance through A, evidence generation, B, policy continuity, C, priority setting, D, resource allocation, and E, role definition. So the answer is D, resource allocation. 
The contribution of polio vaccination refusal to failure in eradicating polio in Pakistan indicates A, gaps in assessment, B, challenges due to public mistrust, C, issues in surveillance, D, limitations in service delivery, and E, problems in regulation. So the answer is B, challenges due to public mistrust. Different provincial health budgets vary widely, leading to inequities in access to care across provinces. This indicates a key limitation in A, centralized governance, B, decentralized governance, C, priority setting, D, provincial stewardship, and E, health infrastructure. So the answer is B, decentralized governance. The 18th Constitutional Amendment enhanced provincial autonomy in healthcare governance. This exemplifies A, centralization, B, decentralization, C, poor leadership, D, weak stewardship, and E, role ambiguity. So the answer is B, decentralization. The Ministry of National Health Services Regulations and Coordination relies on international funding for its polio eradication program. This poses risks related to A, sustainability, B, priority misalignment, C, corruption, D, role conflict, and E, weak ownership. So the answer is B, priority misalignment. The late release of census results can uh, uh, census results can constrain population health planning at provincial departments. This demonstrates challenges with A evidence generation, B accountability, C public trust, D policy continuity, and E surveillance. So the answer is A evidence generation. Uh, the Pakistan Medical and Dental Council regulates medical education and practice nationwide. This is an example of A, decentralized governance, B, professional stewardship, C, local governance, D, centralized governance, and E, donor-led governance. So the answer is B, prof professional stewardship. This is the key of the MCQs. This is the link of our YouTube channel and thank you very much.